A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Thursday, August 20th, Samuel. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words, and blameless in your judgments. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inner being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. The Old Testament reading is from 2 Samuel, the twelfth chapter. And the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat his morsel, and drink from his cup, and lie in his arms, and it was like a daughter to him. There came a traveler to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and I gave you your master's house, and your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord, to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife as your wife, and have killed him, with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite 
to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin, you shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child who is born to you shall die. Then Nathan went to his house. And the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat with them. On the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, The child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, he understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and when he asked, they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servants said to him, what is this that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and went into her and lay with her, and she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him and sent a message by Nathan the prophet. So he called his name Jedidiah, because of the Lord. The New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians, the twelfth chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, 
who appropriates to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one, and there are many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Greeks or Jews, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. A writing from the epitome of the formula of Concord. Number seven. We believe, teach, and confess that not only genuine believers and those who are worthy, but also unworthy and unbelievers receive the true body and blood of Christ. But if they are not converted and do not repent, they receive them not to life and salvation, but to their judgment and condemnation. For although they reject Christ as a Redeemer, they must accept him even contrary to their will as a strict judge. He is just as much present to exercise and manifest his judgment on unrepentant guests as he is to work life and consolation in the hearts of believing and worthy guests. Number 8. We believe, teach, and confess that there is only one kind of unworthy guest, namely, those who do not believe. For such it is written, He who does not believe is condemned already. The unworthy use of the Holy Sacrament increases, magnifies, and aggravates this condemnation. Number 9. We believe, teach, and confess that no genuine believer, no matter how weak he may be, as long as he retains a living faith, will receive the Holy Supper to his condemnation, for Christ instituted this supper particularly for Christians who are weak in faith but repentant, to comfort them and to strengthen their weak faith. Number 10. We believe, teach, and confess that the entire worthiness of the guests at this heavenly feast is and consists solely and alone in the most holy obedience and complete merit of Christ, which we make our own through genuine faith and which we are assured through the sacrament. Worthiness consists not at all in our own virtues or in our internal and external preparations. into your name most holy O Father, Son and Holy Ghost I claim a place the weak and lowly among your saints your chosen host buried with Christ and dead to sin your spirit now shall live within. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy you gave Samuel courage to call Israel to repentance and to renew their dedication to the Lord. Call us to repentance as Nathan called David to repentance, so that by the blood of Jesus, the Son of David, we may receive forgiveness of all our sins, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts, your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom, 
you have permitted this disastrous pandemic to befall us. We implore you, let not the hearts of your people despair, nor our faith fail us, but sustain and comfort us. Direct all efforts to attend the sick, console the bereaved, and protect the helpless. Bring hope and healing that we may find relief and restoration. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Samuel, the last Old Testament judge, and the first prophet, after Moses, lived during the 11th century B.C a child of Elkanah, an Ephraimite, and his wife Hannah, Samuel was from early on consecrated by his parents for sacred service and training in the house of the Lord at Shiloh by Eli the priest. Samuel's authority as a prophet was established by God. He anointed Saul to be Israel's first king. Later, as a result of Saul's disobedience to God, Samuel repudiated Saul's leadership and anointed David to be king in place of Saul. Samuel's loyalty to God, his spiritual insight, and his ability to inspire others made him one of Israel's greatest leaders.
A writing from the epitome of the formula of Concord. Number seven. We believe, teach, and confess that not only genuine believers and those who are worthy, but also unworthy and unbelievers receive the true body and blood of Christ. But if they are not converted and do not repent, they receive them not to life and salvation, but to their judgment and condemnation. For although they reject Christ as a redeemer, they must accept him even contrary to their will as a strict judge. He is just as much present to exercise and manifest his judgment on unrepentant guests as he is to work life and consolation in the hearts of believing and worthy guests. Number 8. We believe, teach, and confess that there is only one kind of unworthy guest, namely, those who do not believe. For such it is written, He who does not believe is condemned already. The unworthy use of the Holy Sacrament increases, magnifies, and aggravates this condemnation. Number 9. We believe, teach, and confess that no genuine believer, no matter how weak he may be, as long as he retains a living faith, will receive the Holy Supper to his condemnation, for Christ instituted this supper particularly for Christians who are weak in faith but repentant, to comfort them and to strengthen their weak faith. Number 10. We believe, teach, and confess that the entire worthiness of the guests at this heavenly feast is and consists solely and alone in the most holy obedience and complete merit of Christ, which we make our own through genuine faith and which we are assured through the sacrament. Worthiness consists not at all in our own virtues or in our internal and external preparations.